I'm Paul Levinson, and welcome to Light On Light Through, episode 201. Well, thank you, and congratulations are still coming in for, I guess, my doing these many episodes. I'll be playing one of them after this review which will be of Invasion, the first three episodes of which debuted a few days ago on Apple TV+. And, well, this has been a great few days for science fiction on the screen. Since last week, an excellent new episode of Foundation and an outstanding first half of a new Dune movie, which, by the way, Part 2, it was just announced today. Part 2 will be on HBO Max, I guess, sometime next year. So I decided to see if I could get a trifecta by watching a brand new science fiction series. Like Foundation, Invasion is on Apple TV+. And... Look, it had a lot to contend with, debuting just as Foundation was getting into really high gear, and when Dune was making a justified name for itself from the moment it opened both in theaters and on HBO Max. So, did Invasion succeed? Well, yes, I think it did. But let me say first, though, that I thought the very first episode, in which the largest part was a nearly standalone story of an aging, retiring sheriff in Oklahoma, was by far the weakest of the three opening episodes. In fact, on a different day, I might have not continued to watch Invasion after that weak first episode. Now, Sam Neill was the main star. He played that aging sheriff in that episode. He's a fine actor, and he was fine in the role, but the story had only the slightest to do with the interstellar invasion of Earth, which is the heart and soul of this series. Well, fortunately, the second and third episodes were out of the ballpark, powerful and enthralling. The stories that unfold in this slightly into the future tableau include a Japanese shuttle to a space station attacked and destroyed by the invaders, leaving behind a lover in Tokyo who works for the Japanese equivalent of NASA and she's determined to find out what happened. A school bus of British kids knocked off the road by an interstellar attack, which results in a Lord of the Flies scenario. And an apparently lone survivor of an American unit in Afghanistan, presumably all killed by the invaders. Now, yeah, that part of the narrative obviously was conceived in film before the precipitous U.S. withdrawal in our reality this past summer. And we just have to assume, watching Invasion, that the U.S. went back in there into Afghanistan for some reason. You know, this kind of thing reminds me of science fiction stories in the 1980s, talking about a Soviet Union in the 21st century. It's one of the hazards of writing fiction about the future. Sometimes reality catches you short. But Invasion is doing just fine after three episodes, even with this Afghanistan anachronism. There's a 1950s War of the Worlds feel to it, except the personal lives of the characters are fleshed out better than in these old movies. The family that figures in the New York part of the story features an Asian-Indian couple with two kids and a Tesla, but their marriage is falling apart even before the buildings, because the husband has fallen madly in love with another woman, a blonde, as his wife sarcastically points out. Indeed, all the backstories are notable and interesting in Invasion, with the exception of the Oklahoma sheriff, but we haven't seen him since the first episode, and who knows, something significant could yet happen out there in Oklahoma. Well, as I said, 
Today brought the great news that there will be a second half of Dune on the screen. We likely won't see it, though, for a year. But now there's some science fiction on television that I'll be watching every weekend in the next few weeks and months as soon as I finish my sojourn into the fate of the Galactic Empire in Foundation. The Light on Light Through podcast Well, I hope you enjoyed that review of this new series, Invasion. Here now are some congratulations about Light On, Light Through, reaching its 201st episode from Cora Bullert. Hi, I'm Cora Bullert, two-time Hugo finalist for Best Fan Writer. Congratulations to Light On, Light Through for 201 great episodes. Here's to 200 more. If you're looking for SFF links and discussion, check out the Speculative Fiction Showcase, indiespecfic.blogspot.com, as well as our sister site, the Indie Crime Scene, indiecrimescene.blogspot.com, for all things crime fiction. Also check out my blog, corabulot.com, where I'm currently doing episode-by-episode reviews of Foundation. Thank you, Cora. And let me just tell you, my listeners, Cora is really a powerhouse of production, She's a writer, science fiction and fantasy writer herself. She compiles lists that she puts up every week of speculative fiction links and crime and mystery links. And she also has a blog where, as she said, she is now currently reviewing the Foundation series on Apple TV Plus with really astute, in-depth reviews. So... That's worth checking out. And I'll be back here soon, a few days in fact, with my review of the next Foundation episode. Again, it's going to be a while before I get back here with a review of Dune. But right after that, you can expect a review of episode 1.4 of Invasion. In the meantime, stay safe. Stay well and enjoy. Help me, Paul Levinson. You're my only hope. Athens. 2042 AD. She ripped the paper in half, then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left again into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Sierra Waters had read once that, years ago, it was thought that men made love for the thrill, while women made love for the sense of connection it gave them. Curled up with a good book says, Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot to Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. Paul Levinson still codes about an ancient biotech war raging on in secret for centuries. 